All right, so next I am going to walk through uh, my thought process and the methods I used for building this piece and how I came up with the idea, how I approached it, and how I ended up putting it together. So we're zooming in, we're zooming into this triangle here. And as we go in, um, you see there's another triangle here, which is now just the place where we zoomed in in the first place. So this whole thing loops, it loops seamlessly. I actually kind of cheated the, the lighting on this one. I couldn't really get it to loop perfectly because the lighting changed, so I just made it so the lights flash every half second. So then in the end on the loop point when the lighting changes, you don't even notice. So um, yeah, I'm a charlatan and I lied to you all. So here's, here's how we do this. Let's get into it. So the inspiration for this piece was this one, which I made before. Uh, and the way that this piece works it's a similar kind of thing. We've got this square, you know, and as we go into it, there's another square down here and then we go into that and then we go into the next one and this goes forever. So this was something that I created before and I want to take it a step further. Um, just to go over how this works exactly, you have your scene with a hole in the middle of it here and then you, the scene is placed inside that hole and then to make it loop, you're animating the little scene so it scales up to be the size of the big scene and then you can just cut it on the loop point and it ends up looping perfectly. So I basically wanted to try that, but with a triangle. So this is called a Sierpinski triangle. Um, it's a kind of fractal where basically what happens is you start with the triangle and then every time there's a triangle, you put a hole in the triangle. That's an upside down triangle and that makes three more triangles. And then with each of those, you do the same thing. So now there's triangle hole in this and then it goes further and further. And basically by the end, you know, you're gonna get a shape that's like this. So I wanted to make something based on that idea. All right, so here is one of the very, very early versions of this project when I was trying to figure out just how to get the animation done. So what I always do for complicated loops like this is I first build out just the most basic form possible just to get the animation locked in. Once the animation is locked in, then you can go back and you start adding things and uh, it just makes it a lot easier to work with instead of having to tweak the animation and stuff while um, while you've already put a lot of detail into it. Another thing worth pointing out here is that to easily line up the first and the last frame, I'm not animating the camera, but I'm actually animating this whole structure here. So I'm keeping in mind the difference between the first level and the second level of this structure, and I'm animating the difference between the two. In other words, the amount that this thing is rotating is the difference in rotation between the first level and the second level. And the amount that it's scaling is the difference between the scale from the first level and the second level. So this is the base. So what's going on here is got a triangle. Okay. Um, got a triangle. Here's the Sierpinski triangle, you know, the first, first level of it. First thing I want to do is just get, um, how do you get it? So the first and the last frame, you get this this triangle here in the same position. So what I figured is you have the scene, and this is an instance of the actual base here. I've just made an instance of it just so it's easy to work with. So this makes it so that if I ever want to change it, I just change stuff in this base, this base null, and um, it'll automatically update through all these things. So I keep everything in one place to make it simple to work with. So first you have this base, Here's the anchor point here, okay? And then relative to that is a, another copy of this instance. So my idea was, okay, it's gotta go up into this triangle. You know, we're gonna rotate it here along this axis. We're gonna, we're gonna, we need to rotate it into place this way. And then we also need to rotate it, um, you know, we need to rotate it around clockwise, counterclockwise, so that it um, it lines up with this hole here. Because as you can see, this hole is, is a triangle that's facing down. This hole is a triangle facing up. So we need to line up that as well. And then the third thing we got to line up is the scale, because this is obviously getting bigger. You know, this triangle is, you know, th this, this outer triangle is a bigger triangle than this one. So we need to animate it, the rotation this way, you know, along uh, the X rotation here. We need to animate this rotation, you know, along, um, what is this? What is this here? The Z, you gotta rotate that. And then we also need to scale it up. So the three things we gotta animate to get this small one into the position that the big one is in. Um, so 
the way I have it set up, let's look at our keyframes here. So we're just rotate, we're just animating all of those properties. So one property that we're am animating is this. We're animating this um, this rotation here, this X rotation. Another thing we're animating is this Z rotation. And as you will see, this Z rotation animates along this because this is the thing that we're trying to get into the right position. This this center triangle, okay. So that's how we're animating that. And then we're also animating uh, the scale here. So this is going to scale up. So then by the end, when you add everything in together, you get um, this small triangle animating up so that it matches the scale of the big triangle. Okay. And then, you know, you can smooth out the animation curves and then get that all to loop. So another thing to make it easy to work with a lot of instances here, you know, or to work with a lot of levels is if you put an instance inside another instance, um, you know, you put it under it in the hierarchy. You can see that it's it's uh, it, anything under a, a parent in C4D. It's the position coordinates are relative. The position scale rotation that's all relative to the parent. So if you want to add more levels of this, you can basically just copy and paste it, and you just paste those same coordinates in. So as you can see, each of these is relative to its parent, the exact same amount. Um, so that's how you can get all these different levels and make it pretty easy to work with. Because if, like, if I wanted to just put more in here, I could just hold down control, copy this, put this under here, and then I could take these coordinates here, copy them, um, and if I paste them here, then they're going to line up and be relative to that parent. So it's all going to work out perfectly. It just makes it really easy to work with. It's, it's, a, it's sort of a little trick that I do to to build some of these more complicated things with a lot of levels. So anyway, that's the first basic step. This is the, the hardest part, honestly, is getting this first animation set up. Um, just the face, that's all I need to tell me that it's working out right. Okay, so the next thing that I did is that um, I wanted to fill this out so that instead of just being a flat face, you know, we can see this whole room. I wanted to build it into a room. So that involves, you know, closing this off. So I wanted to put a face here and a face here. So in that base where all the instances are pulling from, I added these faces. And because it's already set up with instances, you know, everything just goes through it. Uh, this animation is still working out. This still lines up and we can keep going and add some more detail in. So the next thing I did, um, what I wanted to do was fill in these gaps because these are the, the holes that are missing here, okay? So if we take a look at this, you know, we're going into this middle hole, but these two are not filled in. This middle one is filled, these two are not filled. So that's what the next step is gonna be. So it basically just comes down to adding more and more instances. So what I did is I made an instance, you know, this whole thing is built out of instances already. And you can make instances that include instances. So, you know, while we have an instance of this whole face thing here, hold on, let me just turn this off to make this a little more, uh, a little easier to see. Um, okay, let's just focus on this for now. So basically I made an instance of this whole thing, put it on, on these two little holes, which is here, okay? So now we have those in there. And then I just did that again. I put another um, another copy of that instance in each of these little instances here. So each of these includes some more instances, okay, of that thing, you know? And this is just, it just takes time to, to line them up, but uh, took a lot of revisiting trigonometry, and that's why I titled the piece Sokatoa, because if you guys took trig, you'll probably have horrible PTSD flashbacks to to what those abbreviations mean. Um, but yeah, so I just sort of did the math and, f and figured out where these are supposed to go on these instances. And then um, for one more level, I didn't want to go too far and make it too crazy. So these I just capped with a little, just a little um, normal, you know, tetrahedron here um, to fill that out. So now this is what the whole shape looks like, okay? aside from this hole, because this is the hole that's gonna have more of those instances. So once these were fleshed out, and now that we have this whole piece as an individual piece, now we can uh, put these back on, you know, our original instances, and 
you can see how this is built up now. It's basically just this whole thing is taken, made into an instance, and that's put on those those instances that uh, we initially started out with. You know, we started with just the face. It's the same instances. Just now, instead of being one face, it's this whole structure that we built. So you can see uh, from this point of view, this is sort of what it looks like. We go through the whole thing, and then by the time we get back, we're already lined up because that was the part that we figured out in the beginning, you know, getting the camera and the animation perfect from the beginning. And then after that, branching out, adding more details, making it more complex. So now this base is, um, we can just work with this base, you know, we, we have uh, everything here. I'll show you how it works. Um, basically this whole thing is built out of three different faces. That's it. So here's the whole base. Like here's um, side A, side B, and side C. So you can sort of use this as a reference to see where um, where these things are, and you can see how it works. If you change anything on one of these sides, it's gonna just propagate through your entire piece because we set it up in the beginning with all the instances, and um, we set it up to be nice and easy and automatic. So one of the great things about using instances in Cinema 4D is that if you set these up um, with render instances. What it does is instead of copying all the geometry, it just references all the geometry. So basically you only need to load one level of this. Like the computer just needs to load one level of this and it'll automatically, you know, it, it, it just puts it through the whole thing without needing to put in more geometry, like actually putting in more, it's kind of hard to explain, but the gist of it is that um, it'll make your scene run really smoothly, even if you have tons of stuff going on. Like I've got literally hundreds of these flamingos in here and I can, you know, drag through on the timeline. Um, looks totally fine in the viewport. Um, so now it's easy to make changes because all you need to do is hide the instances. It's all set up so you can just work on the original piece here, you know? So if I want to move stuff around, I can just do it here, you know, move a flamingo around or whatever. And then um, that all is what updates in the main scene here. So it's very easy to work with. It runs smoothly, which is really impressive. And yeah, if you set your stuff up from the beginning with this kind of organization, you can uh, make some really complicated looking stuff pretty, uh, pretty simply.